Merriman Smith reporting on the year 1967 with a filmed record of the major events of the year. In June this year, Arabs and Israel again went to war. Egypt's President Nasser demanded that the United Nations withdraw from the Sinai Desert. Arab crowds responded with cries for a holy war. Nasser refused a plea by Secretary General Yutant. He ordered his army to the Israeli frontier. The UN pulled out. Nasser settled his feud with Jordan's King Hussein. In Tel Aviv, General Moshe Dayan took over the Ministry of Defense. June 5th, war broke out. Israel hit Arab aircraft and airfield. Jordan seized Mount Scopus and shelled the Jewish quarter of Jerusalem. In New York, the Security Council met, but the Soviet Union stalled action pending word of an Arab victory. It never came. superiority secured, the Israeli army slashed forward. Within three days, the Egyptian army was neutralized and Israel had driven to the Suez Canal. On June 8th, the Secretary General read a telegram from Cairo. Then he has decided to accept the ceasefire call. Israel's victory was commanded by General Itzhak Rabin. His strategy, based on the most efficient army of citizen soldiers the world has ever seen. Jerusalem, there was an emotional reunion with the holiest of Jewish relics. Israel said she would never withdraw from Jerusalem. Thousands of Arabs fled, compounding the refugee problem. Soviet Premier Kosygin demanded a vote of condemnation against Israel, but soul-searching by some Arab leaders had produced the beginnings of change. King Hussein of Jordan dropped the pose of belligerence and recognized defeat. Jordan will still survive. Ground down by sorrow, for the moment, we will rise again. Soviet Aleutian bombers visited Cairo, however, as the Russians extended the Cold War to the Mideast. A Soviet fleet tied up at Port Said, and Nasser met Soviet President Nikolai Podgorny to discuss expanded military aid. In October, the Israeli destroyer Elath was sunk by a Soviet Styx missile fired from Port Said. 47 crewmen died. 
as Israel buried the dead, she sought a way to even the score. The refinery at Suez was within easy reach of Israeli guns. Most Egyptian oil capacity was destroyed. At year end, the UN observers again watched the Middle East. In New York for the UN session, Soviet Premier Kosygin took time to go sightseeing with his daughter, son-in-law, and a horde of guards, newsmen, and police. He also took time for a hastily arranged summit meeting at Glassboro, New Jersey with President Johnson. It was described as a useful exchange of views but promised no changes in policy. In Aden, the British announced that after 148 years, they were pulling out. Rival Arab groups fought one another and the British for future control. In Athens, where democracy was born, left of center George Papandreou drew huge crowds during campaigns for a general election. But a coup d'etat by the military forestalled him as the army seized the government. At year end, King Constantine was ousted for defying the junta. In November, angered by the buildup of Greek troops on Cyprus, Turkey threatened war. Turks in Nicosia on Cyprus were virtually under siege. Cypriot President Makarios agreed to a withdrawal of Greek troops and tensions eased. President Johnson and the Chiefs of State of 18 other members of the OAS met in Punta del Este, Uruguay, in April. Uruguayan communists demonstrated against the meeting. In this three-day meeting, the American chiefs laid the groundwork for a Latin American common market, but there was no promise of increased American aid. Meanwhile, in Bolivia, the army was hard-pressed to root out communist guerrillas. U.S. Special Forces teams were sent to train the Bolivians in counter-insurgency. Rumor was that Cuban leader Che Guevara, here seen with Premier Fidel Castro, was leading the guerrillas. The Bolivians captured a French leftist, Register Bray, who admitted seeing Guevara, who was reported killed. His papers revealed De Bray as a high-level communist courier. De Bray received a long jail term. The year saw a number of harrowing disasters. In Brussels, fire in a crowded department store took 300 lives. A murderous flash flood swept through the suburbs of Lisbon, Portugal, drowning 200. Damage ran to millions. In Colombia, flour accidentally contaminated with insecticide killed 70. Remorse overwhelmed the baker whose breakfast loaves carried the poison. 60 of the dead were children.
Disaster at sea aboard the U.S. carrier Forrestal on station near Vietnam. A rocket accidentally fired turned the flight deck into a holocaust that took 134 lives. On Seven Stones Reef near the English coast, the giant tanker Torrey Canyon went aground and leaked 30,000 tons of crude oil. The drifting slime glutted harbors, killed fish, and trapped thousands of seabirds. Fashion news is really news these days. Youth creates a whole new style. Twiggy, a skinny, cockney girl, models are revealing styles on a body that has little to reveal. The hippies say they have dropped out of Western civilization. They gyrate to Indian Raga Rock, chant Vedic hymns, and practice their version of Buddhism. Frontiers, the hippies say, are in the soul, and they seek to enter, puffing the current fad in psychedelic weeds. Sometimes they call themselves the protest generation. They say, make love, not war. They spend a lot of time on barricades. President Lyndon Johnson added the title grandfather to his other honors when daughter Lucy Nugent bore a son. The baby was baptized with the president himself as godfather. The first White House wedding in half a century took place in December. Linda Johnson married Marine Captain Charles Robb. The happy couple departed for a Caribbean honeymoon. The United States space program advanced as the Saturn V rocket was rolled out to launch an unmanned Apollo spacecraft. Ignition. All engines are running. The giant rocket shoved a record payload into orbit. Eastern Standard Time. parameters look good. At a height of 38 miles, the first stage burned out. Flight director says go all the way. Four engines. A camera on board recorded the scene. robot surveyor spacecraft were soft landed on the moon and sent back pictures of a lunar sunset. Pictures of a robot shovel testing the lunar soil. And in January, tragedy. The Apollo crew, Roger Chaffee and Ed White, and space veteran Gus Grissom were killed during a training mission. Their Apollo craft caught fire on the pad at Cape Kennedy. They were buried with full military honors. Soviet cosmonaut Vladimir Kamarov became the first known casualty of space flight. His ashes were placed in an honored spot in the Kremlin wall. 
1967 marked the 50th anniversary of the Bolshevik Revolution. In Moscow, they celebrated the Soviet anniversary and its leader, Vladimir Lenin. A defector from the Soviet regime, Stalin's daughter Svetlana fled to the West. She published memoirs of her life with father. In China, Chairman Mao stirred his Red Guards against Soviet revisionism and with Lin Piao announced the detonation of a hydrogen bomb. His rampaging guards destroyed the British Chancery in Peking, incited months of riot in Hong Kong. Britain retaliated by restricting Chinese officials in London. The Chinese embassy people battled police in the streets. Millions of visitors traveled to Montreal, Canada for Expo 67, the celebration of Canada's 100th anniversary. On Dominion Day, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip visited the fair. President Charles de Gaulle of France arrived, bringing controversy. His speech supporting the French separatists provoked official wrath. In England, Prime Minister Wilson abruptly devalued the pound sterling 14% to halt speculative attacks and stimulate exports. His call for belt tightening at home was largely ignored. Other currencies quickly followed the pound, but the franc and the dollar held firm. The U.S. negative balance of payments figured in the president's fight for a tax increase. Now there are pressures on our economy, which demand that we ask for a portion of that 24 billion back in the form of a surcharge. It would be a penny out of every dollar. The rising cost of living aggravated farm problems. Milk producers dumped milk to force higher prices. They got the increase. The United Auto Workers began a siege of auto companies striking the Ford plant. Led by Union President Walter Ruther, they won a guaranteed annual wage. Chrysler also agreed. General Motors is negotiating. In July, race riots broke out. A demonstration against police in Newark erupted into four days of violence. Arson was widespread. Snipers shot at firemen and police. The Springfield Avenue shopping district was sacked. Hundreds were arrested, 30 killed. Governor Hughes called the National Guard to restore order. Bad weather as much as firepower ended the riot.
week later in Detroit, rioting, 40 more dead. Damage ran over a billion. President Johnson ordered federal troops to bring peace to the city. Speech, looting, murder, and arson have nothing to do with civil rights. They are criminal conduct. As elections approached, there was talk of white backlash. But in Cleveland, Carl Stokes, a Negro, was elected mayor. And in Gary, Indiana, Richard Hatcher. We have won a great victory. Tell the truth. Let's make it an even greater victory. Tell the truth. By conducting ourselves in an orderly way. Never before have I ever known, to the extent that I know tonight, the full meaning of the words, God bless America. In Vietnam, air attacks against the North grew in intensity. Areas of Hanoi and Haiphong, steel plants and airfields were added to the list of targets. U.S. plane losses passed the 500 mark by mid-year. At home, protest against the war focused on the bombing. Let us save our national honor. Stop the bombing and stop the war. As I have said before, in evaluating the enemy strategy, it is evident to me that he believes our Achilles heel is our resolve. General Westmoreland spoke for the administration. The tempo of ground war also increased. Marines along the demilitarized zone fought a series of actions against North Vietnamese regulars. In May, the 9th Marines were pinned down in a church at An Hoa. Strikes held the communists at bay. At dawn, the Marines pulled out with their wounded. At Cantien, Marines received heavy fire from rockets and artillery in the DMZ. still held that position at year's end. Thanksgiving Day climaxed the biggest action of the war near Dok Tho in the Central Highlands. <laughs> Infantry drove the North Vietnamese from the high ground. Losses were heavy, but the communists were smashed. In October, thousands of peace demonstrators marched on the Pentagon. Militants stormed the building. Hundreds were arrested. Redevelopment programs, experts say, offer the only sure road to victory. There was a step toward democracy in general elections. One peace candidate received a surprising 30% of the vote. Eighty percent of the electorate voted, watched by U.S. observers. General Tu was elected president, General Key vice president. Their margin of victory was small. 
At home, Secretary McNamara resigned. I greatly valued the opportunity to serve my country as Secretary of Defense, and I'm profoundly grateful to the President for his unfailing support and for his friendship. A Minnesota Democrat, Senator McCarthy, began a campaign against LBJ's Vietnam policy. Prospects brightened for Republicans Ronald Reagan and Nelson Rockefeller. Governor Romney of Michigan announced he would campaign for the Republican nomination. At Dartmouth College, he summoned his party. <laughs> Richard Nixon voiced party hopes. But I believe that the Republican candidate, whoever is nominated by the Republican convention, uh, will win the election. But the president had already launched his own campaign with the same zest he is always devoted to the greatest American game, the warm-up for 68.